light of leering sound What is in the crystal ball? Will the fairground rise or fall? Ride high, ride fast Touch the sky rushing past Remember as you whirl around Fortunes can be lost and found Fair's fair on the fairground Fair's fair on the fairground Ozzy Watson was putting up a poster It was for the travelling fair Ozzy liked fairs. He liked the music and the lights, the rides and the sideshows. Ozzy lived over a sweet shop with his mum, Mrs. Watson. His mum owned the sweet shop. She also owned Watson's Field. That was where the travelling fair stayed for a week every Easter. Come along, Jerry. Oh. Sorry, Mr. Grant. The fair's coming. The fair? <laughs> that noisy, messy thing. If I had my way, uh, Mrs. Leach. Mrs. Leach. Good afternoon, Robert. Look. Oh, no. Don't you like fairs? No, Ozzy, I certainly don't. All that loud music keeping the town awake. All those flashing lights. All those great lorries messing up the place. Oh, do all... be quiet, Robert. We need action, not words. I'm sure there are many people who feel just as we do. Petition, that's the thing, don't you agree? Absolutely, a petition. We could have a word with the two. We could try. Come along, Sherry. Don't tell me, Mr. Grant's cross about the fair. So is Mrs. Leach. Mum, what's a petition? A petition? It's um a piece of paper lots of people sign when they want to make something happen or stop something. Mr. Grant and Mrs. Leach like petitions, but they mean well. You say that about everybody, Mum. You're soft. Don't be cheeky. I'll make you sweep out the shop if you do. Oh! A big, sleek car pulled up. Oh, Mr. Turnbull. Good afternoon, Mrs. Watson. Do come in. Do you like Fez? Oh, very much. You're all right, then. <laughs> Why is he doing so cheeky? He's all excited about the fair. Yes, of course. Uh, of course, you've been letting the fair use your field for a good many years now, haven't you, Mrs. Watson? Oh, yes. And my parents before me, and my grandparents before them, right back. The Thurstons have been bringing an Easter fair to Watson's Field for 200 years. That's tradition. I like tradition. So do I. But, as you know, I'd also like to buy Watson's Field. No, Mr. Turnbull. I've told you before, I can't sell it. It's the only place in town the fair can go. What would happen if I sold it? You'd make a lot of money. Yes. But what about Bert Thurston's fair? Trust me, the fair will be safe. It's not that I don't trust you, Mr. Turnbull. Think it over. Here, young man. For the fair. You will be going. All day and every day, I expect. Say thank you to Mr. Turnbull, Ozzy. Thanks very much. <laughs> and uh, do think it over, Mrs. Watson, about the field. You're there, Mr. Mikey Oh, Good afternoon. Hello. Oh, excuse me. Come on, you two, don't park in the doorway. Is that the Watson's new car outside? Thirteen. Good, Good to see you, you again. again. And Rachel. My <laughs> word, you've grown. 
Hello, Mrs. Watson. Hello, Rachel. <laughs> what do you feed her on, Bert? Magic beans? Hello, Rachel. <laughs> Hello, Squirt. Hello, Captain Cutlass. That's my boot. Is a good one? Of course he is, you dark <laughs> parrot. The Watsons are all good ones. <laughs> all right, Ozzy. Fine, thanks, Bert. Right, business. Thurston's Fair has arrived. Yes, I have noticed. So how much do we owe you for the week's use of your field, Mrs Watson? Same as usual, Mr Thurston. Same as usual. You're soft, you are. Now, don't you start. Here you are. Same as usual and a bit on top. Oh, no. I... Don't argue or I'll set the parrot on you. Right, I must go. See you later, Jean. The first lorries will start pulling on any minute now. You coming, you lot? Hey, you two. Uh, uh, You've forgotten <coughs> something. Thanks, Mrs Watson. Go on, Rachel. Uh, Get Ozzy, Rachel, and Captain Cutlass went to watch the lorries and trailers and caravans pulling on to Watson's Field. You may be a squirt, but your mum sells good toffees. Oh, Ozzy? Uh, not just now, thanks. Not you, Captain. Get out. Wish I could work in a fair. After the fair had pulled onto Watson's field, Ozzy had a cup of tea in Bert and Rachel's caravan. Well, we're on. No breakdowns, no arguments. Everybody's happy. Very nice. I've got a feeling we're in for a good week. More tea, Ozzy? No, thanks, Bert. What's up? Don't you like my tea? Oh, yes. It's just a bit strong, that's all. Of course it's strong. Put air on your chest. By the way, I'm taking over from Gran this year. I'm going to be Madame Varadi, the fairground fortune teller. What, you? Yes, me. Gran's too old to travel now, and Dad thinks I'm grown up enough. Can you really tell fortunes? Of 
course she can't. It's just a bit of fun. Pays well, too. <laughs> now keep her up. Do you have to do that, Rachel? Shh. I'm reading the tea leaves. Well, you can mop up afterwards. I see trouble. Trouble in the tea leaves. Trouble in the tea leaves. <laughs> Don't talk nonsense. <laughs> Did you see anyone, Dad? No, oh, they're gone. Oh. But look, there's a note. Get out of town and don't come back. That's nice. It's my boot. I told you, trouble. Hooligans, that's all. Nothing to worry about. Well, Madam Variety, come on, let's get this mess cleared up. Rachel! What? Yeah, I'll get a dustpan and brush. Look, Ozzy, it's nothing to worry about. Hey, look at the time. Your mum will think you're not coming home. Mum knows where I am. Scram, go on. Off it. Come early yeah. in the morning and you can watch the rides being built up. Thanks, Bert. And hey, forget about that brick. Like I said, it's nothing to worry about, OK? OK. On his way home, Ozzy heard two voices behind a trailer. Men's voices. I've had a good look round. The hired hands live in the small caravan. Got the envelope with the money? Yeah. Somewhere. Come on. Here it is. Right. Do we give it to them tonight? Of course we do. But will they clear off? When they see how much money they're getting, they'll clear off tonight. Thurston can't build up his rides without hired hands, can he? No. <laughs> He'll be stuck, and we'll be here. Yeah. It's a piece of cake. Know what I mean? And what about the dog? Yeah. We'll see about the dog first. Come on. The men walked away. Ozzy crept after the two men. <laughs> Mr. Grant was walking Sherry at the edge of the field. As Ozzy watched, the two men went up to him and patted Sherry. Oh, yes, a lot of money. <laughs> Very expensive, but worth it. Good night, then. Come on, Sherry. Ozzy walked slowly home. He was thinking. I wonder where Mr. Grant's got to. Sherry will miss a treat if they don't hurry up. I wouldn't serve him if I were you. Now, don't you be rude to Mr. Grant because of his petition, Ozzy. He's entitled to his opinion just as much as you are to yours.
Oh, good evening, Mrs. Watson. I was afraid you'd be shut. Couldn't let Sherry go without a chocolate, Mr. Grant. Ozzie tells me you're getting up a petition to stop the fair. Is that right? Uh, well, yes, yes, it is, I'm afraid, Mrs. Watson. Uh, nothing personal, of course. Well, I understand. Um, Just don't ask me to sign it, that's all. Uh, no, uh, quite. I just happen to think that a nice, quiet town like ours can do without a messy, noisy fair. Oh, Ozzy, sorry. Shouldn't you be doing your homework, young man? It's the Easter holidays. When I was a boy, we had homework every night, holidays included. Good night, Mrs. Watson. Good night, Mr. Grant. But when Mr. Grant came out of the shop, Sherry had disappeared. That night, when the rest of the town was asleep, two men were very much awake. Early, I see. But I said to come early. Have you cleaned your teeth? I'll do them twice tonight. At the fairground, Ozzy met Mr. Grant. Morning, Mr. Grant. What? Oh, it's you. Have you found Sherry? No, Ozzy, I haven't. I went to the police last night and I came out for one last look around. And what did I find? Look at this. Just look at it. This is just the thing to make people sign our petition. Where there's a fair, there's always a mess. Perhaps the showman didn't do it. Hmm? You should ask him. It's not fair to blame him without asking. Very well. Come on, you two. Let's be having you. Wakey, wakey. What? What I have to do to wake you lazy blighters up? Knock the door down? What? Yes. My name is Grant, and I wish to complain about the litter. So do I, mate. It's a disgrace. You wouldn't believe grown men could sleep through that, would you? I had hands. The sleeping beauty's more like. Right. I'm coming in for you. Sherry. My dog. You stole my dog. What do I want with a dog? Where are my hired hands? I'm warning you, you haven't had the last of this. And what about that litter? <laughs> Give it a kid. There's nobody here. Nice. A brick through the window. The place looks like a rubbish tip. I'm told I'm a thief, and two of the hired hands have cleared off. Very nice. Trouble. It was in the tea leaves. Never mind the tea leaves. How can I build up my rides without hired hands? <coughs> can we help, Gov? Who are you? I'm Steve. And I'm Sydney. We've just arrived in town, Gov, and we're looking for work. Uh, yeah. Know what I mean? Uh, is it bad? No, smacking button. <laughs> oh, I like budgies. He's a parrot, actually. It's the same thing. Who's a pretty boy, then, eh? <laughs> Ever worked in a fair before? <laughs> Us? Worked in fairs? <laughs> All over the place. Haven't we, Sydney? Oh, yeah, Steve. From, uh, uh... <laughs> All over the place. As a matter of fact, I got a letter from the last showman we worked for, saying how good we are. <laughs> it's here somewhere. Ah, it's in my bag. All right, all right, I'll see it later. You're hired. That's Rachel, me daughter, with the parrot. And Ozzy, a friend of the family. Right, 
Put your bags in the caravan and come with me. The first job is to build up the twist. <laughs> twist, Gov? <laughs> it's a piece of cake. <laughs> Steve? Piece of cake. Uh -huh. Big Ed. I can build any ride you like. Just don't ask me to have a gun. That's all. My stomach can't stand it, know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> The men started to build up the rides. First, the twist. While the rides and the sideshows were being built up, Rachel and Ozzy cleared up the litter. I'd like to know who did this. <coughs> Monkey Pops! Monkey Poppin! <coughs> Quite right, Captain. Ozzy? You're supposed to be helping me. Sorry. Rachel, I don't trust those two men. What two men? The new ones. Steve and Sydney. Oh. Big Ed and Badgy Brain. I think I heard them talking last night. And I think I saw them with Mr Grant. I think he's their friend. And I think they're helping him to make trouble. You're doing a lot of thinking, Squirt. Hello. What's this? In the rubbish, Rachel had found an envelope. There was an emblem on it. To S and S for the hired hands. Your mastermind. What do you think of that? I don't know. Well, you're the one who's doing all the thinking. And you're doing all the talking. Why didn't you look in your crystal ball, big head? Right, squirt. I what? will. Hey, those two new lads are all right. They're doing a good job. Hey, So are you, Ozzy. Very nice. Thanks a lot, mate. Free rides tonight, OK? Thanks, Bert. Back in the caravan, Rachel 
gazed into her crystal ball. <coughs> Sorry, love. The door was open. I'm looking for the gov. Dad, he's not here. No? Never mind. I'll find him. All done, then. Eh? Oh, yeah, piece of cake. It was a good job me and Sydney turned up when we did. Otherwise, your dad would have been in trouble. Know what I mean? Very good job. But Rachel wasn't sure that it was. That night, the fair opened for the first time. And make sure you're home before nine. Oh, and Ozzy, come on. Yes, Mum? Don't say anything to Bert and Rachel about Mr Turnbull wanting to buy the field. Mr Turnbull doesn't want anyone else to know at the moment. And I don't want Bert and Rachel worried about it either. All right? Of course, Mum. And don't get up to any mischief here. Ozzy was in a hurry to get to the fair. Then he saw Mr. Grant and Mrs. Leach in the street. They were asking people to sign their petition. Mrs. Leach, this gentleman will sign. I'm a reasonable man. I don't jump to conclusions, but this fair is nothing but trouble. My dog here disappeared last night and turned up this morning in the fairground, in very strange circumstances. And then there's the litter. Some of you must have seen the litter. Well, I certainly did. And... What, what Mr Grant is trying to say is that this fair is a nuisance. Think of the poor people living close by, and why should they be disturbed? Exactly. Like a it. nice town like ours wants peace and quiet. That's right. Oh, yes, but it also needs some action now and then. Oh, Mr Turnbull, I must say I didn't expect to see a respectable person like you supporting the fair. Of course, you, you are entitled to your own opinion. Oh, thank you very much, Mrs Leach. And my opinion is there's nothing like a whirl on the swirl. Here, here. Have a good time at the fair, Ozzy. Thanks, Mr. Turnbull. But Ozzy didn't need any money at the fair that night. Bert gave him a free ride on everything. Right. Hang on to your belt, Steve Trump. But while Ozzy was having fun, somebody came to see Mum at the shop. Another cup, Mr. Turnbull. No, thank you, Mrs. Watson. I only dropped in to... Well, you know why I dropped in. Have you thought any more about it? Yes, I have, Mr Turnbull, and the answer's still no, I'm afraid. I won't sell Watson's Field. Perhaps if I were to make you a definite offer so that you knew just how much money you were getting, I think you might change your mind. Look, Mrs. Watson, I do understand how you feel, but I'm only trying to help. And I know you need the money. You're on your own and you've got Ozzy to bring up. Wouldn't it be nice to give him all the things he wants, all the things he needs? Thank you, Mr. Turnbull, 
but we'll get by. It's the fair that needs help at the moment. Ah, yes, the petition. Very sad. Well, I'm certainly not going to sign it. Now, Mrs. Watson, forget about the petition. Are you going to the fair with Ozzy? Oh, yes. Tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow night? Well, have a good time. And have a whirl on the swirl for me. No, thanks. And if you change your mind about selling, uh, just phone me. Here, my number's on this card. In the gun, please. At Watson's Field, the fair was getting busy. Steve and Sydney were busy too. Find Ozzy, Rachel, and make sure he's all right. Rachel! Rachel! Ozzy was stuck at the top of the big wheel. We'll soon have things sorted out. What happened, Cuff? It must have been the generators. What? All stopped at once. Just go and help the other lads, will you? Sure. What up the top with? Yeah. Yeah. Glad I wasn't stuck up there. My stomach can't stand that thing. What happened? The generators were got at. The generators were got at? I'm afraid so, Cuff. Sabotaged. What, every single one? 
Well, fix so that they're cut out. Oh, they're all right now, nothing permanent. Every single one, eh? Yes, Gov. If you ask me, somebody wants to stop people coming. Somebody wants to get rid of this fair. Know what I mean? Bert felt sure that Steve was right. Next morning, Rachel was in the caravan, staring at the tea leaves again. Mommy! I see now it's the ground. Do you know what, Rachel? You talk less sense than that parrot. Bad ground. Ah, watch it, watch it. Our family's been bringing a fair to Watson's Field every Easter for 200 years. And there were other fairs here before that. This has always been good ground for travelling fairs, Rachel. Us, the best as far as I'm concerned. But not anymore. Admit it, Dad. It's just been one thing after another this year. With the brick, the dog, the litter, the hired hands, the blackout. All right, I'm not saying we haven't had problems. All I'm saying is it doesn't make it bad ground. And I'll tell you another thing, we're not running away. If there's trouble, we'll stick it out. <coughs> and you can tell that to your tea leaves. What next, Gov? Stick these up wherever you can. Cool. Free rides. At the edge of the field, Sydney stuck a poster on a tree. Steve went into a phone box. Yeah, everything's going just great. And we're all set for tonight. Good. Make sure nothing goes wrong. What about the girl? Yes, get the girl. <laughs> it's a piece of cake. Come on, Mum, hurry up! Oh, calm down, Ozzy. The fair's not going to run away. Right, now, young man, you may escort me to the fair. Rachel was busy in her tent. She was sorting out her fortune-telling cards when her next customer came in. Only it wasn't her customer. Good evening, do take a seat. Oh, budgie brain. <coughs> Hit a bat and smack it bottom. <coughs> Hello, budgie. <coughs> Here! Leave, <coughs> Paul. Your dad wants you. Right now? What for? Dunno. He just said, go to the caravan now. Oh, but I'm busy. It's not my fault, love. I'll look after the tent for you. Oh, trust Dad. Uh, you better take the budgie with you. Come on, Captain. Tell the customers I'll be back in five minutes. Sure. Five minutes. Or maybe just a little bit longer.
Dad? Dad, are you here? It's a cake. <laughs> Captain Cutlass was left on his own in the caravan. Ozzy and Mum were having a good time at the fair. Everybody at the fair was having a good time. Try tea bags for a change. Tea bags? <laughs> I told you, Mum. She's taken her fortune, Jenny. Oh, yes, of course. Rachel's Madame Ferrari now, isn't she? <laughs> oh, where is she? I've always wanted to have my fortune told. Well, now's your chance. Go on, Jean. She'd be really chuffed if you went in to see her. All right. Come on, Ozzy. We'll go in together. Where's my trophy? Oh, <laughs> Ozzy. Weedy little monkey. Come on. Sydney was gazing into Madame Varadi's crystal ball. Oh, where's Rachel? Don't know. She's looking for her dad. She asked me to look after the tent. The budgie went too. <laughs> oh, what a pity. I wanted her to tell my fortune. Well, lady, I can tell you how to make your fortune. Oh, really? Easy. <laughs> Sell this field to Mr. Turnbull. How did you know I own this field? Don't know. Oh, everybody knows it, don't they? Yeah, of course. It's a well-known fact. But how did you know Mum's been asked to sell it? Nobody else knows that. Well, don't know. <laughs> Maybe I saw it in the crystal ball. <laughs> Having trouble, Sydney? Oh, no. No trouble. They're just looking for Madame Varadi, that's all. Yes, where is Rachel? Oh, the mysterious Madame Varadi. Ozzy saw something stuck to Steve's shoulder. Don't ask me where she was going. He picked it off. Was she selling to you, Sid? It was a parrot feather. Ozzy suddenly felt afraid for Rachel. What's the matter, Ozzy? I'm going to look for Rachel. Perhaps Spot knows where she is. Ozzy! Where are you off to? I'm looking for Rachel. Oh, but have you seen her? Well, she's in a tent. She's not. What? Me and Mum went to see her. She's not there. Sydney says she's looking for you. Oh, perhaps she's going back to the caravan. Come on, we'll have a look. <coughs> Rachel? You in here? Wakey, wakey. 
What have you done with Rachel, Captain? It's a bad smacking bottom. It's a bad smacking bottom. Well, she's not here. I suppose I'd better go and close down that tent of hers. I don't know, Ozzy, girls. Is she, Wait, here? Is she No, Jean, she's not. Oh, well, she'll turn up soon, I expect. There's probably a very simple explanation. And that's quite enough from you. Go to sleep. <laughs> yes, and we must go home. Ready, Ozzy? Ozzy? Ozzy, are you all right? I don't know, Mum. Well, if you're feeling sick, young man, it serves you right for eating my toffee apple. Come on, now. Good night, Bert. Thanks for a lovely evening. Night. Does it good to get out once in a while? If Mr Grant would only go to the fair and see how much fun it gives people, he'd soon tear up that petition of his. Not very cheerful. Still feeling sick. I'm not feeling sick, Mum. Mm. I can't think what Rachel's up to, can you? I don't think she's up to anything. Mm. Still, she ought to have told her dad where she was going. What's up, Mum? Mm. Oh, Ozzy, no! shop was empty. All their stock had gone. There was nothing left. Good gracious! Mrs. Watson, what's happened? I'm afraid it seems as if we've been burgled, Mr. Grant, while we were out at the fair. Oh, well, they've certainly made a very thorough job of it, haven't they? Well, I haven't checked the store in yet. No doubt that will be just as empty. But at least we have a good idea who did it, eh, Mrs. Watson? Have we? I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Grant, I... It must have been somebody from the fair, of course. You think those people are your friends, Mrs. Watson, but they're not. They must be laughing at you right now. Rachel's not laughing. She's disappeared. Has she indeed? How very interesting. Well, Mrs. Watson, I think you had better phone the police. said it was a nice job. No fingerprints. Oh, Ozzy. Do you think some of the showmen could have done it? That's what you've been thinking about all morning, isn't it, Mum? Well, not Bert or Rachel, but some of the others. You mustn't think that, Mum. I just don't know what to think. There seems to be nothing but trouble at the moment. I think I might sell the field after all. No, Mum, you can't! But Mr Turnbull said the fair would be safe if I sold the field to him. You'd trust Mr Turnbull, wouldn't you, Ozzy? Yes. Yes, Mum, i trust Mr Turnbull. I'm glad to hear it, Ozzy. Good afternoon, Mrs. Watson. Mr. Grant told me about the burglary. Very sad. Yes, it was a bit of a shock. Of course, there's a lot of talk in the town, you know. What sort of talk? About the burglary. People think it's strange. All your stock, 
and the girl from the fair both disappearing at the same time. That's what Mr. Grant's been saying. He just wants to make trouble for the fair. Ozzy. Rachel's our friend. She's Ozzie, never. that's enough. It's just what Mr. Grant needed, I'm afraid. A lot of people are turning against the fair now. I don't think the town will want it back next year. Very sad. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Ozzy, go and put the kettle on. There's a good boy. Of course, Mrs. Watson, if nobody wants the fair to come back, then everything's all right, isn't it? All right, Mr. Turnbull. What do you mean? Well, why keep the field if there's no fair to use it? You could sell it without feeling bad about it. Well, I, I don't know. I, I can't think straight at the moment. Of course, of course. You're still upset about the burglary. Oh, it's wrong of me to bother you just now. Why don't you phone me later? You've got my number, haven't you? Have I? It's on my card. Oh, yes. I, I'll just make sure it's still there. Yes, it's still here. Fine, fine. Well, uh, give me a ring later. The sooner the better, of course. Well, young man, can I give you a lift anywhere? Well, Ozzie, you've always wanted to ride in a big posh car. Don't keep Mr. Turnbull waiting. Coming or not, Ozzie? Yes, please. To the fairground. <laughs> What do you think of this, then, Ozzy? Your mum could buy a car like this, if she sold Watson's Field. Mum can't drive. It was a short ride to the fairground. Here we are, then. This one for you. Fine. Thanks very much, Mr. Tumble. <laughs> Can you manage the door? Then, as Ozzy was getting out of the car, he saw something. Fine, well, uh, I'll be seeing you again soon then, Ozzy. Yes. Thanks, Mr. Turnbull. It was one of Rachel's fortune-telling cards. Now Ozzy was quite sure. Mr. Turnbull wasn't all right after all. Bert was on his way to phone the police. Bert, I've got to talk to you. Later, Ozzy, I must phone the police again about Rachel. There's still no sign of her. I don't know what could have happened. Bert, you've got to listen. I think Steve took Rachel. What? And I think Steve and Sydney burgled our shop. Burgled your shop? All our stock was stolen while we were at the fair last night. I think they did it. And I think Mr. Turnbull planned it all, not Mr. Grant. Mr. Turnbull? Who's Mr. Turnbull? He's a man with a posh car. He wants to get rid of this fair and buy our field. Well, I found this... You know what, Ozzy? You're another one who talks less sense than that parrot. But, Bert, I found one of Rachel's cars in his car. Then Bert saw Mr. Grant and Mrs. Leach. Mr. Grant was talking to some people. Mrs. Leach was asking them to sign the petition. Of course, the fair is a nuisance and an eyesore. But there's something else we have to consider, something far more serious, eh, Mrs. Leach? Oh, quite so, Robert. Mrs. Watson's shop has been burgled. All her stock has gone. So has the girl from the fair. What if they've gone together? Mr. Grant? Hmm? Mr. Grant, I'm going to count up to ten, then pump you on the nose. One, two... Three. Oh, please, Mr. Thurston, there's no that is worse. Four. Five. Six. Please, Bert. Seven. Eight. Nine. Bert, look. Bert. 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 B
everybody ran back to the fair. Steve and Sydney were busy with a smoking generator. What happened? Smoke just started pouring out, Gov. It what? Don't know why, Gov. Good job we were here. Know what I mean? A very good job. What if it had happened when the fair was open? What if something else goes wrong? Things can't just go wrong. Everything is checked twice a week. Oh, really? Yeah. At least twice a week. Every time we build up and pull down. A travelling fair is the safest place in the world. Rubbish. I've seen enough. This fair is dangerous. And I'm going to get it stopped. For good. Uh, what's the use? Time for a cup of tea, I think, Bert. You're quite right, mate. Come on. It's a piece of cake. Well, I reckon that should do it. We can leave the rest to Mr. Grant. Ozzy made Bert a cup of tea. Ah, thanks, Ozzy. You're a good mate. Not bad at all. We'll make a showman of you yet. Hey, what am I doing? I must get in touch with the police about Rachel. You've got to tell them about Steve and Sydney, Bert. It's got to be you who tells them. They won't take any notice otherwise. Look, Ozzy, what's all this nonsense about Steve and Sydney? They're two of the best hands I've ever had. Please, Bert. <laughs> Captain Cutlass knows what happened. I'm sure of it. He was here. What up, Rachel? Captain. 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 What up, Rachel? Rachel? Captain. Captain. It's a piece of cake. Captain. It's a piece of cake. It's a piece no. of cake. But that's no. what Steve says. Captain Cutlass must have seen what happened. He was with no. Rachel, wasn't he? Now will you believe me? Ozzy, that's just a parrot. It talks nonsense. Come on. Steve no. took Rachel and Turnbull must have driven her away. I told no. you I found a card in his car. This no. is her card. No. Oh, go away, Ozzy, and leave me in peace. <laughs> Ozzy left Bert and ran home. Mum was just going to phone Mr. Turnbull. Mum, where's that card? The one Mr. Turnbull gave you. I need his address. I should have before. Ozzy, is that it? Yes, but you... Please, Mum. Look, it's the same. Mum, whatever you do, don't phone Mr. Turnbull. I think he's got Rachel. Oh, see ya. I think she could be there at that address. Take these things to Bert. Ozzy ran all the way to the address on Turnbull's card. Mount Square. It was an office block. Turnbull's car was outside. Now Ozzy knew what to do. He crept in through the door of the office block.
Ozzy made his way up the stairs. Steve. Thanks, Gov. After all the trouble you and Sydney have made, <laughs> the fair won't come back even if the town wants it. <laughs> and the town won't want it. Grant and Mrs. Leach will make sure of that. They don't know it, of course, but uh, they've helped us a lot. <laughs> Poor old Grant. So she's sell now? Hmm? Oh, yes, I'm sure Mrs. Watson will sell her field now. I'm <laughs> And it won't be very expensive. She won't argue much about the price. As you would say, Steve, it's a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, girl. Yeah. yeah, mind you, we waited to get my hands on that field for years. Now... Now what? Now, I can build an office block and a hotel on it and sell them for a lot of money. Yes. I shall make a lot of money, Steve. Uh, you and Sydney will do very nicely, too. But, uh, first... First, I've got one more job for you. What's that? Oh, nothing difficult. We must move everything you stole from the shop. What, everything? Yes. Send Sydney over right away. You can stay with the fair till we get back. All right? No bother. Good. The door was locked and bolted on the outside. He had a job to pull back the bolt. Hello, Squad. Thanks for coming. Let's get out of here, shall we? Sydney. Oh, great. Now what do we do? So what do we do now, Bert? Go to the police again. Uh, I don't know. Wakey, wakey. This lot on a parrot. It's not much to go on, Jean. Ozzy seemed... Oh, so certain. I just can't believe Mr Turnbull's mixed up in this. He's so nice. So Steve. Well, not nice exactly. But I like a good worker. I was just telling the lady what a good worker you are, Steve. Yeah, come and say hello to Mrs. Watson. All oh, right, we'll come. It's a piece of cake. Get off. It's a piece of cake. Get off, you stupid bird. Get another go at me. What? When did that parrot ever go at you? When? It's a piece of cake. Come on, go. Talk all right. Know what I mean? Where's Rachel? Go, oh, go. Oh. Rachel was still in the office block. So was Ozzy. Do you think he's still there? Let's have a look. Hello, 
so was Turnbull. Turnbull and Sydney jumped in the car and drove off. Good thinking, Mastermind. Now what do we do? Well, we must get back to the fair, find Dad and then get the police. Come on. Rachel! What? It's this way. Be dead. Not likely. I've enjoyed our little chat, Steve. You can tell it all to the police when they get here. All right, Jean? The police are coming straight away. Turnbull stopped his car by the fairground. No sign of them, Governor. Maybe they went to the police. No, they've come here first. So start looking. Yes, Governor. Oh, hello, Mr. Turnbull. Oh. Mr. Grant, nice evening. Yes, isn't it? I always bring sherry along here, you know, every night. Yes, quite. I must say, I'm very disappointed you haven't signed our petition yet. Well, as I explained, Mr. Grant, uh, excuse me, uh, Sydney, uh, find Steve and tell him what's happened. Well, I can't stand here chatting all night, Mr. Turnbull. We hope to have the petition ready by the end of the week, you see. You will let us know if you change your mind about signing, won't you? Yes, Mr. Grant. Good night, Mr. Turnbull. Good night. No charge. Yet. Dressed in blue. And I shan't be selling Watson's Field. Not to you nor anybody else. Ah, you got me. <laughs> I always said it. That parrot talks a lot of sense. 
<laughs> the next evening, Bert and Rachel had a party in their caravan. Nothing special, just tea and lots of cream cakes and jam donuts. Dig in, everybody. Don't be shy. This is a celebration. Yes. <laughs> Another cup of tea, Mrs. Leach. Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Thurston. Not just now. Perhaps later. Ah, ah, it's a piece of cake. Ah, 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 no, it's not. <laughs> it's a jam donut. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mastermind. <laughs> I've been completely wrong. I admit it. I just don't know what to say. Oh, <laughs> action, Robert. Not words. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. <laughs> and they tore up the petition. Well, Rachel, what do you see now? No more trouble, I hope. I see happiness all round. Oh, hey. <laughs> well, you know what that means, don't you? Huh? A ride on the gallopers. Oh, Come on. Oh. Touch the sky rushing past Remember as you whirl around Fortunes can be lost and found Fair's fair on the fairground Fair's fair on the fairground Bye-bye, White Watchers! Ho-ho! Oh, I hope you enjoyed the story! Bye-bye! Bye-bye!